continuing on with, uh, <coughs> excuse me, with an algebraic representation next. Let's say instead of being given graphs like we were given in the previous problem, we're given the equations of the functions themselves. So let's say we have two functions, y equals x squared and y equals square root of x. And we're asked to find a whole bunch of functions and find their domain where appropriate. So if here first we have f plus g of x, this is just notation for add the two functions together. This should be pretty simple. x squared plus square root of x is just that. We can't do anything with it. There's no uh, common terms or like terms that we can combine. And hopefully you remember from the previous video that for the sum, the difference, and the product, and even with the quotient, we just have to find the domains of the individual functions and then take the intersection of them. So the domain of x squared, x squared is your friendly neighborhood parabola, it's defined everywhere, is negative infinity to positive infinity. And the domain of square root of x, remember that we cannot take the square root of negative numbers and get real numbers as answers. So it has to be non-negative numbers, which means it could be zero, because I can't find the square root of zero, and it has to be all positive numbers beyond that. And if we graph those two domains, so let's say this is zero, the domain for square root of x is zero to infinity, and the domain for x squared is negative infinity to infinity, so the entire number line. And where's the overlap? The overlap is only from zero to infinity. So imagine that you know, you're buying pizza with a friend. That one of your friends only eats vegetarian food, whereas you don't have any dietary restrictions. So if you're getting pizza and both of you wanted to get something that you can split in half, then you could say, well, I can eat any toppings. I can eat you know, non-vegetarian and vegetarian toppings, but because you can only eat vegetarian stuff, why don't we split, you know, I don't know, some uh, pizza with green peppers on it. So then both parties can eat it. But if you got something with, say, chicken or pepperoni, then uh, you could eat it, but your buddy couldn't. So when we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing functions, we want to make sure that the new function that's been created at respects the domains of the original two functions that came together. We cannot uh, add two functions together if one function is not even defined at a particular x value. So for instance, if you were to think of negative three, well, I can square negative three, it's just gonna be nine, but I cannot take the square root of negative three and get a real number. So that's why it's not in the domain of x squared plus square root of x. And then next question asks us to find f plus g of negative 1, which means I need to find what f plus g is, which I did right here, and plug negative 1 into it. Well, if we did that, negative 1 squared we can evaluate, but square root of negative 1 is where we get stuck. So we say that this does not exist, since negative 1 is not an element of, or you can say negative 1 is not inside this interval, uh, 0 to infinity, which is the domain of that function, f plus g, f plus g of negative 1 cannot be defined. It does not exist. Now, had this said f plus g of 3, or say 4, f plus g of 4, then we would have had 4 squared plus square root of 4, which would have given us 16 plus 2, which is 18. So if we pick a number that's in the domain of the sum of the two functions, we can plug it in, no problems. If we pick a number outside, it, it's not going to give us a defined answer. Similarly, the same exact argument can actually be used for the difference also. In fact, even for the product. So the difference f minus g of x can be rewritten notationally as f of x minus g of x. f of x is x squared, g of x is root x, so it's really just x squared minus root x. There's no like terms, so I can't do anything with it. Domain we already talked about, and if we take the intersection of these two domains, I'm going to get the same thing again, 0 to infinity. It's the same picture as here. 
And if we're asked to find f minus g of 2, well, I already found f minus g of x. All I have to do is plug in 2 in there. So I would get 2 squared minus square root of 2, which is right here. And then we can simplify 2 squared into 4. And then minus root 2 just comes along for the right. We can't do anything else with it. Let's look at the product. Excuse me. So f times g of x is the same as f of x times g of x. Excuse me. So here we're multiplying the two functions together to get x squared times root x. Another way of writing root x is x to the 1 half. And here we can use the product property of exponents to say, well, if the bases are same and we're multiplying, what can we do with the powers? We can add them. So 2 plus 1 half is 5 halves, which gives me x to the 5 halves here. And again, these domains are just coming from before. The domain will be the intersection of the two domains, therefore 0 to infinity. And if we were asked to find what f times g of 0 is, well, f times g of x is just x to the 5 halves. If I have to evaluate it at 0, I just have to plug 0 in for x. So 0 to the 5 halves is just going to be 0. If you're not sure why, basically this is can, this can be rewritten as square root of x to the fifth power using properties of exponents and radicals. And I'm just writing the exponent in radical form. And then square root of 0 is 0. 0 to the fifth power is simply 0. Let's look at the quotient next. Here again, we have to slow down and make sure we're not breaking anything. So f over g of x can be rewritten as f of x over g of x. That's what the notation means. And here I can put x squared on top and g of x, square root of x on the bottom. And here I, I skipped a couple of steps, but you can rewrite this as x squared over x to the 1 half. <coughs> Excuse me. And since bases are same and we're dividing, we can subtract the powers. That's the quotient property of exponents. So 2 minus 1 half is, is 3 halves. So I get x to the 3 halves here. Now, the domains are still the same. The domain of x squared is negative infinity to infinity. The domain of square root of x is 0 to infinity, including 0. However, since the square root of 0 is 0, Basically, I can get a 0 in the denominator if I plug 0 into the function. That's not permitted. So if we go back to the very beginning of the packet, we can find the quotient of two functions as long as the denominator is not 0. If the denominator is 0, we can't do that computation. So basically, just like we did with the graphs, what we have to do is make sure that the number that makes the denominator 0 is thrown away from the domain, meaning we never go near it, we can't plug it in. Since square root of x is in the denominator and 0 makes the denominator 0, we have to throw 0 away from the domain. So the sum, the product, and the difference, the domain was always 0 to infinity but including 0. For the quotient, the 0 is excluded because if I plug 0 in, I'm going to end up getting a 0 in the denominator. Now here you have to be very careful because you might be inclined to say, well, this does not have a denominator in it. This is probably the most common mis mistake that students make in this section. You have to consider the domains before you do the computations, not after you've done the computation. <laughs> Because if you have x to the 3 halves, I could plug 0 in here. I would just get 0 as the answer. But in order to get to here, this function is not allowed to be 0. So the domains are always computed based on the original functions before you do any computations or operations, never afterwards. And f over g of 3 is basically just f of 
f over g of x with x replaced with 3. So instead of x there, I just replaced it with a 3, and I got 3 to the 3 halves. So computations are easy. The domains are tend to be the little sticky ones. And for these last two parts, instead of f over g like we did here, these ones say g over f. So again, the, the algebra is actually quite easy. Square root of x goes on top here, and x squared goes on the bottom. We can rewrite this as x to the 1 half over x squared. And because we have the same base and we're dividing, we can use the quotient property to say that this will be x to the negative 3 halves. And then we can use the negative power property to move that to the denominator, which will give us 1 over x to the positive 3 halves. And the domain here, we have to have the same level of care as we did before. The domain of the two original functions is the same. But in the denominator, now we have x squared. So we have to ask ourselves, is there something that we can plug into x squared that will make that function 0? And the answer is 0, because 0 squared is 0. So the domain is going to be, neg uh, is going to be 0 to infinity, as before, because that's the intersection of these two domains. But I have to throw away the 0 from it. I cannot include the 0 because it would make my denominator 0, and I'm not allowed to have that happen. And then for the last one, plugging in 3, I can just plug 3 in here, or I can plug 3 in here. It's just going to give me the same answer. Uh, you can think a little bit farther ahead. Had we plugged 3 into this expression, we would have had to rationalize the denominator since we're not allowed to have radicals in the bottom or in the denominator. It's not considered standard form. But if I plug 3 in here, it's already rationalized. I don't have to worry about moving a radical from the denominator to the numerator. So uh, word to the wise, just look to see which stage you can plug your numbers in to minimize computations. Hopefully that makes sense. We'll see you in the next video.